It would be very hard to describe the psalm. Uh, I don't know that there's ever been a, a battle like it. I mean, you had two armies in static positions. Uh, the movement of either of them would be about 200 yards, the difference between the two basic front lines. And the psalm, which had been built and rebuilt as a battleground by the British, uh, initially to relieve pressure on Verdun, but it became uh, a cesspool. And uh, there were divisions attacking and counterattacking for months. The, for instance, the Irish uh, Ulster Division, the 36th, attacked in that area on the 1st of July, and they were massacred. They made a slight gain, which is all anyone could hope to do at this point, but there was an aimless gain. I mean, you achieved very little. The towns of Guillemong, and it didn't exist as such. They were merely pieces of earth that people said, that's Kinji. Well, what about your own action, uh, which won you the MC? And, and I, I presume that, that, that your losses were great in that action. In your own battalion? Yes, the they were very, Fusiliers. very big. Uh, my, I joined, when I joined the battalion of the 9th Dublin Fusiliers, there were 28 officers, I believe, and uh, about 900 men. Uh, we weren't, I weren't, wasn't long with them. We were in action in a matter of days. But I, at the time of joining, I was a temporary second lieutenant, and I was probably the most junior officer in the, in the battalion. Amongst the battalion, Kettle, Tom Kettle was also in another company, B Company. But uh, we didn't. It was a christ christening of war, if you wish. But we had passed up through, getting them to our forward position, we passed through literally miles of guns, all classes and types, wheel to wheel, which were to concentrate their barrages on the Germans for our advance. They did so, and it was deafening. It also was a time when we went under the first of creeping barrages. This was the first beginning, the beginning of this method of, of advancing in warfare, and it had a doubtful effect because we lost as many, I think, through your own gunfire. Well, they could have fallen short, you mm -hmm. see. The distance was 250 yards. We lost a lot of men. We gained our objective. And when we had gained the objective, uh, I found that uh, there was only one other officer of my unit that I could collect. Out of the 28 that had gone? Out of the entire battalion. So we got together and tried to concentrate the men that had strayed around the place. It was in, uh, the place was in a state of chaos. And we got together around about 120 men. And I placed them in, uh, I happened to be the senior officer of the two of us, I placed them in different positions around our area and reported back by runner that we'd got the objective that we were set. And we were to, got a message back to stand fast. So while we were there, it was nightfall. Do you wish me to describe all this? Well, what I would like to know is really how many men were left at the end well, of our two I'd days? I'd rather action. abbreviate this because it's lengthy. There were, when we finished, when we were relieved, we were relieved by a battalion of the Welsh Guards. And that was about uh, 24 hours after our attack. I marched out with one, my, the only officer, with 98 men. Out of the 900? Out of the 929 young. officers. And this was a, 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 terrible though it may sound, a rather common enough thing in this... Well, it, it wasn't uh, in this war when you had casualties. They were usually fatal because any form of gun wound without the advantages that now exist, there was no penicillin in those days, there were no sulfur drugs, so that any uh, bad wound or injury turned gangrenous. And killed you. And usually they died or had arms and legs amputated. It was a serious thing. The, the amount of deaths was out of all proportion. 